ziehen. No. All right, I'm trying to share my screen, but for some reason it's not letting me. I'm going to try again. Yeah. Okay, here. More sure, yeah. Once it is displayed, we'll confirm you. Okay, great. Yeah. So my topic today yes, is changing no. role of libraries and library associations in the new normal changes, challenges ahead. Within this theme, today I will focus on areas that the pandemic has made a priority, such as broadband as human rights, technologies, open access, copyright, climate action, and the well-being of library workers. And on the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. I also bring to you questions for your consideration. So I'm going to be asking these questions, but I'm not answering them because it's for you to think about and relate them to your libraries and your colleagues in your region. So you are the only one that can answer them because they are based on your reality. Uh, this is a momentous time for libraries and communities. We serve our world and the global information environment are being transformed by the profound impact that COVID-19 has had and continues to have on people, society and the planet. New policies and new technologies also play a role. It is very encouraging to see that there is a renewed focus on communities that all libraries serve, academic, public, school, special libraries. They all serve communities that are the environment in which they are located. And life as we knew it changed forever and library services have changed forever too. But library programs and services will always be about people. That is immutable. Through the ages, librarians have brought change. Librarians have stood in solidarity to support communities, countries, and regions when fires, hurricanes, earthquakes, tsunamis, national disasters, and man-made disasters strike. In this historic time that we have lived, and we are living, we stand in solidarity with our communities, and these actions are part of bringing change. Change is a set of continuous actions and we cannot bring change once and that's it. We must continue to drive change. So what has been the role of librarians and libraries up to now? First, it should be noted that there was a massive shift to digital. The world is now online. It was a disruptive change from one moment to the next a bit messy and blurry and people left their belongings in the office thinking they will return soon and a year and a half later maybe uh, some have not been able to return but librarians went all out with much hope and energy to creatively design services to continue providing access to information to library users in many places the change was direct to library service, the, the service, as you say, went directly to library service access on the mobile phone. Online referral services were increased or began to be offered if they weren't. Many online services flourished, webinars of all kinds to offer a great variety of classes started. Academic libraries began to teach teachers how to use Zoom and other websites to teach subjects to students, help teachers manage the PowerPoint presentation system, how to create videos for students, and academic libraries created classes for users to learn how to use databases, information literacy also moved all online. And those are some of the just examples of library and academic library services. Public libraries moved all the programs online, 
offering programs mostly on Facebook Live and Instagram Live and information about the virus, about how to protect oneself, cultural and social programs, classes on how to use the library's databases. They devise how to provide books. There is a noise. So uh, public libraries devise how to provide books and materials without contact with library patrons. So they will place books and packages outside the libraries for the patrons. School libraries began offering library instruction in Zoom or in the program used by the school to continue classes with students. Ways of being in contact with the students were also devised. Setting up tables outside the school where students could return books to quarantine. School librarians requested free books from publishing houses to give free books to students to take home and keep, and those books were placed in a takeaway package so there was no contact. So those are some of the many services impact, change and offered by libraries during the pandemic and still today. Let's see what's been the role of associations during the pandemic. Associations have been at the forefront. IFLA first put up a phenomenal resource page with guides, reports, and best practices during closing and reopening libraries. It contains a compilation of documents from all over the world. It's a commendable job. Resources have been developed by IFLA and librarians and different library associations in all regions of the world to guide changes, including the shift from in-person to online services copyright issues, online programming of all types of libraries, resources, electronics, and wellness for library workers. From the EFLA website, I would like to highlight a selection of uh, online resources from different countries of the world, and you can see India is featured there. From all these documents developed by associations and libraries, it is clear that library associations advised the closure of libraries to protect the employees and the communities from the virus. So that's something that happened. Where I live, the associations also spoke against discrimination against Asian populations and supporting accepting all people. Associations around the world have also placed an emphasis on being vigilant about misinformation related to the virus. As we know, IFLA created an infographic about fake news that is available in many languages. It is excellent, and we use it a lot in all kinds of libraries. During the pandemic, librarians have created pages on library websites to help people understand how to identify stories that do not have accurate data. Organizations that work with libraries have also created alliances to work in some areas. For example, OCLC teamed up with companies and ALA, the American Library Association, to scientifically study how long the virus lasts in different library materials. This studio, uh, the project name is Realm Project. This is very important for the safety of librarians and also for the users. And this is a multi-year study that covers three phases. And for instance, it has revealed that the virus can live in books stacked on top of each other up to six days. And currently, uh, the study is in its third and final phase uh, until September 2021. So we're very close to um, in that. Areas that the pandemic has made a priority. These are the challenges that the pandemic brought up and they became a priority. I will start with the 17 sustainable development goals, including in the areas that the pandemic made a priority. The world in different countries had made progress in achieving these goals, but the pandemic delayed that and actually put back the advancement of the development agenda worldwide. So there is a lot of more work to be done 
to achieve uh, some type of more development until 2030. Libraries are extremely important for sustainable development. And as we know, the agenda for the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, was adopted in September um, of 2015 during the United Nations General Assembly that I uh, was very fortunate to attend. In it, we managed to place access to information in Objective 16, Peace, Justice, and Solid Institutions. Because libraries play an important and unique role in promoting community awareness of resilience, climate change, and sustainable future. Libraries are also leading by example, by taking steps to reduce the environmental footprint. And I would like to share with you how libraries are helping the communities they serve at all levels, academic, library, public, school libraries, special, during the pandemic. And I will go uh, goal by goal. Uh, so goal one, end of poverty. To eradicate poverty, libraries are sharing information to help people apply for government benefits. Zero hunger, goal two. To eradicate famine, libraries are referring people to food pantries and organizations that offer free food. And they are also hosting free food programs in the city. Goal three health and wellness. Libraries develop guides to help people understand COVID-19, how to be safe and stay healthy. Goal four, quality education. They provide access to e-learning programs to help students with their homework. Goal five, gender equality. They broadcast live online events to empower women and teach how they can achieve their goals. Goal six, clean water and sanitation. They disseminate information on prevention measures to say, stay safe from the virus. Goal seven, affordable and non-polluting energy. They provide services usually provided in the library building, but remotely. Goal eight, decent work and economic growth. Provide programs to equip job seekers with tools to apply for jobs. Goal nine, industry, innovation, and infrastructure. They defend and fight for open access for electronic resources to help researchers and students working from home. Goal 10, reduction of inequalities. They place resources available to learn languages and new skills online for people to learn from home. Goal 11, sustainable cities and communities. Promote safe and sustainable practices to encourage those who live in densely populated urban areas to do their best to follow recommended measures such as social distancing and self-isolation. Goal 12, responsible production and consumption. Libraries safeguard and preserve the records of cultural heritage and research that has to do with the pandemic. Goal 13, climate action. Reference, uh, reference services and library education have been moved to innovative online spaces. Goal 14, underwater live. They are educating on the management of waste that is released into the ocean, including single-use plastic waste due to COVID-19 to ensure sustainable blue economic opportunities, which is what they are calling the economics related to life on the water. Goal 15, life of terrestrial ecosystems. They promote sustainable ways to better protect the population and prevent new pandemic outbreaks. Goal 16, peace, justice, and solid institutions. Libraries offer free access to information to dispel information, misinformation about the virus. And goal 17, alliances to achieve the objectives. Libraries associate and partner with public and private agencies to provide services. 
As you can see, the work done by libraries, librarians, and everyone who works in libraries contributes directly to the success of societies and communities, cities and countries reaching levels of development as is its purpose of the Sustainable Development Goals. Other areas that the pandemic made a priority include broadband for all. The pandemic uncovered opportunities for libraries to stand out. And it also brought out inequalities and disparity in internet access. While many of us use the internet for work, education, doctor visits, dealing with government agencies and social life, the Web Foundation says, yes, the internet has been a lifesaver in 2020, but not for 3.7 million people still without access. Libraries can play a central role in the economic and social recovery of the pandemic. Users need broadband in libraries to access devices, collections, and information, and a myriad of services. It is also used by librarians to create and develop user accessible content and provide access to transformative resources to enhance education and lifelong learning for communities deeply impacted by COVID-19 in all regions of the world. This will help women, girls, low income populations, students, tribal communities, the elderly, vulnerable groups as well. Libraries are the bridge for democratic engagement as I have uh, discussed with the INELI cohort in India and South Asia. IFLA has very, uh, a very effective campaign by uh, the Libraries Pledge for Digital Inclusion to support advocacy nationally and internationally. This campaign was used to support our proposals at this year's Internet Governance Forum, which has uh, had the theme, the theme of Internet for Human Resilience and Solidarity. I invite you to watch the webinar I organized and coordinated on broadband as a human right with uh, the IFLA continuing professional development and workplace learning and the new professionals uh, where I had uh, Dr. Jesus Lau, Katharina Isberg, Sanjay Kumar Bihani, and moderator uh, was myself. And another event on broadband as a human right, this is from the American Library Association that I presented um, as part of the um, American Library Association uh, task force on the United Nations 2020 Sustainable Development Goals. Now, another area um, as a challenge or a priority is libraries and technology. Technology-driven solutions to monitor the spread of the virus and support social distancing and quarantine can further threaten and erode the value of privacy. So that's a challenge. The push for contact tracing could further integrate large tech companies into many people's private lives. While testing and tracing has proven effective of containing outbreaks, the use of technology to support tracing will open up people to having their movements tracked and recorded so that health officials could obtain logs of phone activity. So cell phone of a person uh, could be uh, uh, used to um, look into the data used by other um, phone owners, for instance, that's an example. But there are some questions for you to consider with your colleagues. How will library values of privacy and intellectual freedom behave in a world where big data and tracking technologies have become a more common part of community and government responses to a public health threat. How will libraries help community members understand the levels of information that are collected in different settings and the need for institutions to report 
or share information with public health officials or other members of the public. Will the current crisis lead libraries to invest in technologies like automatic book sorters, robotic book retrieval systems, and other contactless technologies? In addition to delivery, cleaning, and transportation, this period of social distancing can also accelerate the use of technologies to police or monitor human behavior. The new services offered by libraries reflect these uh, technological trends. Libraries are part of the society and all trends can inform the services provided. New services based on technology trends that have become ubiquitous in recent months are helping libraries research uh, rich users. Librarians have gone extraordinarily above and beyond to serve patrons during the pandemic. For instance, Los Angeles public librarians who are available live on the library's Facebook page to answer reference questions and speak to users connecting from home in Spanish and English. This service mirrors that of telemedicine when services are provided online. <clears throat> we also have robots. There are robots in the grocery store and in libraries that carry books, answer questions, do some homework, organizing books, etc. Subscription services. Libraries have developed plans to deliver special subject books and article facts to patron, patrons, and the items are available to pick up at the library. Automation has become a necessity rather than a luxury during this pandemic. Contactless service is a game changer. People want to stand at the door and wait for the sensors to open it. And many libraries offer automated book selection for users with a wide variety of machines. But technologies alone do not determine results. They must be adopted in particular social, economic, and political contexts that influence their development and use. Therefore, it is useful that we analyze and create resources to help our communities during this pandemic based on our social, economic, and political context. The social inclusion of the community is the consolidation of democracy. And we don't want to leave anyone behind. Another uh, challenge or priority area is open access. IFLA has stated that open and comprehensive access to academic literature and research documentation is vital for understanding our world and identifying solutions to global challenges, and in particular, reducing information inequality. For example, countries like India are contemplating the One Nation, One Subscription Program. And I invite you to watch the webinar organized and moderated with IFLA Continuing Professional and um, uh, Development and Workplace Center uh, Learning on open access and libraries, lessons from COVID-19 and our path towards the future, where we talk about IFLA's actions in this area and actions of organizations such as SPARC, which is the Coalition of Academic Resources and Academic Publications, and also the libraries of the renowned MIT University in the United States. SPARC supports ensuring free, immediate, open access to research results. It's vital, they say, that it's vital to accelerating the progress of target research communities towards COVID-19 tests, treatments, and vaccines. And MIT has said that the crisis demands an accelerated transformation of its library plan into a platform for the creation, discovery, dissemination of use, 
and preservation of knowledge, fully open and equitable access to solve complex programs, problems in the service of humanity. Another area is copyright. It is imperative to move accurate action in this area. Temporary provisions related to copyright and legal issues should be considered for the long term. And there are also considerations related to fair use and legal issues related to copyright that we should analyze. A group of librarians here in the States wrote a white paper on these, and I would like to share some elements of that document. For instance, in the fair use area, clearly making materials available and accessible to students in this time of crisis with the pandemic will almost always be fair use. As long as we are thoughtful in our analysis and limit our activities to the specific needs of our users during this time of crisis, copyright law support our users. The fair use doctrines accommodate the flexibility related, uh, required by our shared public health crisis, allowing society to function and progress while protecting life and human safety. They also encourage campuses and academic campuses to begin considering the long-term needs of this situation. While fair use is absolutely appropriate to support the growing demands this emergency presents, if time frames are extended even further, campus need to research and adopt long-term custom solutions. So there is a lot to think about. Of course, this is uh, mostly related to laws and the states, but I hope it's helpful. IFLA has called on the World Intellectual Property Organization, WIPO, to take a stand and show leadership to help libraries. Without proper copyright laws, and particularly under COVID-19, there is concern that libraries will not be able to carry out activities such as story time, provide access to research, safeguard heritage, provide access to information more broadly, and support access to information linked to the sustainable development goals. So IFLA is working to support international action together with different library associations around the world that will establish a basic set of limitations and exceptions to copyright for libraries, which will function independently of technology and across borders. And we have the precedent of the Marrakesh Treaty and the process that was followed there. Another area uh, is climate action, and this impacts libraries. I fully agree with IFLA publications that state that climate action is not just for politicians. Uh, for this reason, on April uh, 26, we presented an event about libraries changing the world in this area. The picture I'm showing on the screen is from a, um, a library tour I did of libraries in my island, Puerto Rico, after a hurricane devastated the island, including libraries. So we brought book donations, we toured the libraries, and then through the American Library Association, uh, people donated and we were able to provide grants to rebuild libraries. And so here is a, a, a notice of an event we presented titled Libraries Changing the World, Educating and Promoting Understanding Climate Action. And we had the uh, chief of publications of the United Nations and president of the, uh, the chairs, I should say, of the IFLA and ALA sustainability communities. Um, I, I recommend to watch it because it includes uh, helps for different library types in this matter. In its document on libraries and sustainability, IFLA has outlined two key roles for libraries in this area. Libraries are role models 
and they are also educators. They promote understanding of problems among citizens and help them learn to change their own behavior to preserve our planet and deal also with climate action. The United Nations has said that as countries move towards rebuilding their economies after COVID-19, recovery plans can shape the 21st century economy in clean, green, healthy, safe, and more resilient ways. The current crisis is an opportunity for a profound systemic shift towards the more sustainable economy that works for both people and planet. And on the screen, we have a screenshot of the IFLA sustainability uh, section. Both IFLA and the ALA sustainability groups, and this one is the uh, sustainability groups of the American Library Association, they aim to support sustainability within the library community through the development of curricula, collections, exhibits, events, promotion, communication, library buildings, and space design. And the last uh, challenge I will share with you today has to do with employees' well-being, wellness of library workers. Another aspect that we must pay attention is to the well-being of library workers. The care and attention that employees receive from their employers should be reviewed to ensure that employees remain healthy and safe in the workplaces. How do you manage? This is a question for you. How do you manage when employees cannot go to the physical building because there is a pandemic? Or when they start to return and there is still fear, of course, because the virus has not been eradicated. All of this is very important to keep our amazing library workers safe, to advance our profession, and for libraries to continue serving our communities. Researcher Katrina Kendrick Davis a director of academic libraries also, studied how the low morale of librarians, low morale of librarians in the USA uh, during the pandemic affect them. Unfortunately, the results are only uh, for the US, but I hope you can um, take some information from here. The results indicated that at times there may be a disturbing level of abuse by users lack of institutional support to help librarians solve problems and others related to the situations ca caused by the virus. So we can see the study, the study can help us tackle these types of problems elsewhere before they happen. We are all stressed at some point because the pandemic is a difficult situation, but how can we help each other? Let's think about that. How will libraries accommodate library workers who wish to complete more of the work remotely? Uh, this entails considerations of equity within the organization, team cohesion, communication, and other challenges to the organizational culture. Care must be taken to maintain a balance. And here's the link to an event I organized uh, for the American Library Association about some of these matters. Libraries depend on frontline staff to provide valuable services to communities. The pandemic challenged many libraries to balance their commitment to the community with their commitment to the safety of staff and the users they serve. And so at last, libraries return to a world that may continue to pose some public health risk. How? Will frontline staff be supported? How can we work to achieve all these different huge goals and areas I've mentioned today? Well, we can impact public policies and world organizations and your region organizations. And I know because I worked on this for a long time and we can mobilize and make allies to change the world. Some of the uh, strategies to reach these goals include working in unity, having empathy for the communities, kindness, um, realizing advocacy with um, human rights, human rights awareness, having interdisciplinary collaboration, 
develop alliances with agencies and organizations and non-governmental organizations and civil society, collaboration with all in your region or country. What do we need? Well, this requires immediate action, right? We can drive change and to put libraries at the decision-making tables with government and organizations. And so library associations have started to do more of this to uh, associate, uh, to strengthen alliances with global and national organizations and regional organizations that support subsidies, review of rules and procedures, addressing information structures and digital inclusion, supporting the development of, of infrastructures in the countries, in the regions and towns. We can demonstrate how libraries are impacting um, our communities and our strategy needs to be long term for response and work leaving no one behind we must change paradigms collaborate in all sectors promote policy transformation supporting multi-sectorial alliances is key embracing efforts as multi-dimensional processes and securing a seat at the table where policies are discussed to show the value of our proposals and the value of libraries. Both librarians and library associations have worked and increased work in these areas during the pandemic. As I said, during the Occupied Library uh, Conference, we are the ones, you are the ones, that we have been waiting for. Librarians can position libraries as key players at national, and regional and local levels to generate change. You are that leader, we are that leader. We have the knowledge, the capacity and the power to work united with the regional and national library associations to help rebuild a just and equitable society. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Loida, for a wonderful and very informative presentation. And uh, in fact, sharing the, you know, uh, your uh, experience during this and uh, what pra best practices are going on uh, during this, especially when you, you know, last out about library association and uh, how to reach their goals in detail. So uh, thank you so much. And I think uh, you also, uh, you know, uh, uh, talked about this uh, innovative services uh, during pandemic uh, period and then the REALM research project which is you know the reopening archives libraries and museum so uh, of course when we are talking about we are you know connecting in our Indian environment uh, and then you also talked about the libraries development and the UN 2030 agenda so that was also very uh, fruitful. You also talked about sustainable way for the library services. So this is actually, you know, we can connect in our uh, environment. Then, as you say, broadband for all. It is, you know, the need of the hour and it is our right also now. So enhance, then enhance education and uh, uh, lifelong learning. You also talked about uh, uh, IFLA activities and ALA activities because many of us are still not aware about, uh, you know, things in detail, even like how to uh, become a like member of IFLA and ILA and we have it, uh, my, you know, things are in mind that we have to pay some big amount to take a membership. So that I think uh, during question answer, you may brief because as you talked about few Indians, you know, they are playing important role of IFLA, but how as a, you know, a library science professional, uh, we can connect with the IFLA because uh, even during our studies, we read about IFLA, ALA. So since uh, uh, you are holding a position at IFLA, you also have experience at ALA. So you can also talk about how more and more people can take a membership of ALA and IFLA and how we, uh, you know, we library, we uh, library information science professional from India can actively participate in IFLA and ALA activities. You also talked about open access and libraries. And we thank you for, you know, uh, memorizing, you know, about uh, this uh, uh, MPL activities, uh, one of the webinar of uh, about one nation, one subscription. 
and that is also you know still uh, government is working on how to you know make it functional then you talked about climate action and then how libraries are changing the world and their sustainability especially in context of ifla and we also thank ifla you know they have organized such kind of uh, webinar workshop uh, in this regard and very important point you raised about wellness of library workers because this is how you know when you are heading the library we need to see uh, on this aspect also which is very very important so thank you once again we sincerely thank you uh, for giving uh, you know uh, your presentation in detail and now uh, uh, i open the you know this forum for question answer so let me see uh, the chat box if there any question somebody is asking to share the uh, link for the major libraries so i think uh, that is one can go and check so um, another if anybody has any question they can put uh, on the this chat box so loida i have a question to you as i will repeat again uh, can you advise how we you know as a uh, uh, library information science professional working in india uh, how we can get actively connected with ifla and ala and what we need to do uh, can you please uh, help us uh, guide us on this regard that's a good question right because we want to have uh, colleagues from different parts of the world engaged in uh, the global arena and it's great also to have them in the american library association um so um at ifla there are different levels of membership if you want to be a member that way you could be an individual member there are student levels but also if your library association is a member of ifla you could be a member that way um, at least here in the United States, uh, the American Library Association is a member of IFLA and I am a member through the American Library Association because I am a member of uh, the American Library Association. And so um, that way I can um, participate in the committees and the various works as I have done for many years now. So it's important if you are, your library association is a member of IFLA, the members are a member too. Um, and uh, maybe there is a, a, a an umbrella library organization in um, in India, and so they could be the member, and then the members of that association are members. So that could be an option um, for you. Um, uh, a way of being a member of the American Library Association, uh, we have a level for international librarians, and. Um, it's, uh, I don't remember the exact amount, but it's very low uh, in terms of the dollars. And I am happy to um, share the link to the ALA International Relations Office. And you can um, go there and, and look more for the, you can connect with the staff member as well. Uh, we have members in ALA, uh, we have members from more than 150 countries and we have about uh, uh we have libraries that are members international libraries we have library associations that are members of ala as well we have individuals so it can go uh, different ways um let me see if i find a chat here and i can i don't see the chat oh here okay i'm sorry that's the link for the ALA. And um, members of the international community that are members of ALA, the American Library Association, are also uh, members of, can, can be members of committees and participate in all areas as well. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, thank you for sharing the link. Uh, I'm sure uh, uh, this link you shared for ALA, American Library Association. Uh, because uh, I have seen when I take, you know, we uh, see a lot of news about, you know, people share about participation in ALA and IFLA. But I thought of, you know, since you are present here, you are holding a position. So I, as I can see young participants, so I think it is a, you know, opportunity for them to be become. Because what I feel is, unless you get connected with this such association, you will not have a flavor, you will not have a feeling of, you know, what activities they are doing. and. 
I have found this kind of association. They are very close. Like they are only like most of them are members. So until unless you become a member, you will not be having much idea about you know. Uh, like we know SLA and all. So I have another question, uh, 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 Loida, for you. Uh, like uh, SLA, they have Asian chapter and you know, kind of things. So do uh, IFLAR, uh, this uh, ILA, they also have uh, this kind of uh, ALA, have this kind of uh, chapters, or uh, what is your take on this? Yes, the SLA Asian um, chapter is wonderful. I've presented some events with them as well, um, and the colleagues are great. I know them because they're also members of ALA and they're also members of IFLA. So that's, uh, they are wonderful. Um, ALA has um, a subcommittee from the International Relations uh, Committee and has to do with uh, South Asia and Asia. And so they have two different ones and um, they are very active actually. Um, I believe the chair was from Singapore, the latest, the, the most recent chair. So we have the international members are very, very active, as I mentioned. And um, it will be a great connection if you can uh, work with them in somehow. And so I'm trying to find it here online very quick. Let me see if I can share the link with you. Okay. Yeah, that will help us. Okay, let's see. Okay, here is the, yeah. All right, so that's the link to the uh, Near East and South Asia Committee. And it, of course, has the Asia and Oceania Regional Council, um, and that is uh, widely uh, known so you can find it online, uh, is the um, Asia and Oceania Regional Council of IFA. It includes um, India and, well, includes also Australia, New Zealand, so it includes the entire area over there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so that is what, yeah, so I think uh, this talk, I am I'm sure that after this talk and discussion, uh, you know, there will be more participation, more membership for IFLA and ILA. So uh, this is then a last chance. If anybody has any question, they can put in the chat box. Otherwise, we we'll move forward. Excuse me, sir. Uh, Excuse yes, me, sir. Yes, yes. A uh, few people have raised uh, hands. Uh, just like Sarika, ma'am, and Monu, sir. If they want to ask question, they may unmute himself or herself and ask question. If you allow them. Yeah, sure. So one by one, we can ask. Sarika, are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. I'm there. Yeah, please ask your question, ma'am. Okay. So, uh, thank you very much for uh, organizing a nice lecture on the very uh, relevant topic. And uh, thanks to Loida. Uh, we met in IFLA 2018 Malaysia. Uh, you gave the keynote speak uh, speech uh, where I presented my paper about library fashion. Okay? Yes. So, yes. <laughs> Yes, so I'm really pleased to hear you once again uh, on this uh, Madhya Pradesh Library Association platform. So my question is about, uh, you mentioned that uh, uh, climate change or um, the disaster that is happening worldwide, the same thing uh, this India has witnessed this year, uh, probably two years back, uh, we have started having the uh, bad effect on the climate and the libraries, public libraries especially in Maharashtra, it is one of the state of state in India uh, is getting very much badly affected means uh, it's uh, too much rain because of the climate change has uh, really uh, devastated the library collection and uh, all the books are really you know uh, they are all in a water means entire floors are floors and floors of the libraries are in the water for uh, I think eight or two ten days okay so uh, my question is here that uh, since because of this pandemic, our government is not in a condition, financial condition to support these libraries. So is there any international funding available 
for uh, such reasons that uh, to uh, help these libraries public libraries uh, who is having precious collection but they are not able to uh, do anything because of lack of funding this yes, is my question yes. is for uh, you thank you um this is such a, an important situation there are libraries um all over the world that are suffering from floods. Right now, there are floods in the southern part of the United States. Uh, yes. There are fires. Some libraries were burned down uh, and fires in the, in the California area last month. Um, so there are many um, uh, libraries that are suffering due to a uh, climate situation. And um, Unfortunately, I have to say, there is not uh, a place where I can send people to see if they provide uh, money for libraries in that situation. Um, but there are worldwide organizations like the Red Cross and, and other uh, organizations that maybe cater to certain regions. So uh, there are some organizations that um, I think there was one that was working with Africa directly, other with the Caribbean directly. I know Ineli is wonderful in the Asian region. So I wonder if they might have connections with organizations that can help libraries in India and South Asia, because that might be a good place to start with the Ineli, um, the Ineli conveners. Maybe they have connections. Um, ALA has provided help in terms of collecting donations and then giving those donations as grants to libraries. Um, and um, I remember Vanuatu when they have a hurricane that's in the Pacific and in Puerto Rico, Haiti, Mexico, but it's a very specific instances. So um, I will suggest that uh, perhaps you or the people that are uh, looking into this matter in that region, connect with Ineli, connect with ALA. Um, maybe there are people in the Asia and Oceania uh, section in IFLA that can have ideas on where to uh, look for help. It is a very uh, stressful situation and um, there is not a straight answer right now, but there are places that you can connect to continue um, looking so I wish you all the really best, best luck uh, with that situation. Thank you very much, Loida, for giving uh, uh, hints about how we can go about it. Uh, sure, I will uh, work on that uh, uh, guidelines, what you have given just now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Salika. Thank you, 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 uh, you ma'am, for answering I just want the... to say... Yes, yes. I yes, say that I remember her talk from... Um, this event at IFLA in Malaysia, it was about human rights and how we can, um, I, I, my talk was about human rights and fashion. So how we yes. can do that. And it was very interesting. So um, yes, to see you here. Yes, yeah. thank you. Thank you, you ma'am. Uh, I think one of the participants uh, has raised the hand. Uh, Seema, can you just tell me who was the, that uh, participant? Otherwise we can wait to go. Speak, SP Catherine, sir. So, uh, I think uh, it's not our, I think, left the meeting. So, uh, SP Catherine. Yeah. Yeah. So, thank you, Seema. Uh, thank you, ma'am, for uh, answering all the questions uh, raised by our participant. Now, I request uh, our president, MPLA, Dr. Prabhat Pandey. Uh, to give a word of thanks. Prabhasar, over to you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Patel. It's uh, really a wonderful and excellent talk. Thank you, Loida, for uh, your excellent talk and uh, 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 all the queries you sought out, you answered. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for, once again for accepting our invitation. Uh, I heartfully thank uh, to you and uh, our friend Dr. N.K. Khatri and all the LIS professionals uh, from India and abroad who joined the session. Thank you so much. Before leave, uh, one question from Mukesh Gaur. Uh, 
uh, I request Loida to answer them. My, uh, how can India uh, pace up with ALA that we can learn uh, better and better? Over to Loida. Yes. Yeah. Yes, uh, that would be wonderful to be even more connected with India. Um, I shared a link earlier to our international relations um, office and the um, information from the director of the international relations office is there. And so I suggest to connect that way because he's very responsive and he is uh, he will have ideas on how to integrate um, with some work, hopefully. And so, yes, it will be very good. I see that you are very active in your region. Uh, the pandemic has not stopped any of you. That's very important. And so that is part of what the library associations do to keep the members informed and continue the uh, continue professional development this way uh, through the phone or computers online, but uh, not drop them because librarians need so much information right now to provide services as well. Yes, very true. Thank you so much. Thank you, Prabhas, for giving Prabhas for giving vote of thanks. Now, before we end up, I request all of you to please on your video so we can take a group photograph and then we'll end up our session. And we uh, once again sincerely thank you, uh, uh, Loda ma'am, for joining this platform. And uh, you know, and I this uh, session was very fruitful. So thank you so much for joining us. And uh, uh, thank you so much, all the participants, for joining uh, this session. Thank you so much. Now we are going to end the professor. Yes. The session. Uh, once, once again, thanks to our MPLA organizing team, especially Dr. Pathak, Seema, Sudhir Gupta ji, Rajesh Kathane, Manoj Mehar, and Dr. Santosh Kori, and all the members of MPLA. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you, Dr. Pandey. Thank you very much for your nice thank arrangement. You, thank, you, thank, you, thank, you. thank you, sir. Thank you. You all may leave the meeting. We already closed the session. Okay. Thank you so much.
लिंक दे दिया जाए
सेशन वो तो मैं बोल रहा हूँ अगला सेशन चल रहा है लेट तक चल रही है
रोटी खाई अपना क्या बोल रहे बंद कर
ਪੌਦਾ ਸੋ ਲਾ ਗਿਆ ਆਪਣਾ ਕਿ बंद करो लाइट ही आ गया मन बंद तो है बस पापा सर है दिया तो बजे रहने से मेरी बात से हो